What if there was something vital missing in all our efforts to address global challenges in the 21st century? What if it were simple to create? And what if all the pieces are ready to be assembled now? I'd like to share with you my vision for a new field of science, one that combines the richness and rigor of cognitive science with the expansive efforts to formulate an integrative understanding of the coupled Earth system. I'm calling this new field Human Interface Design for Global Change. My name is Joe Brewer, and I'm on the path to create this new field while pursuing a PhD in the next few years. I'll explain what I mean by this in a moment. First, let's start with a bit of context. The 20th century was an era of specialization. Many new fields of research were created that separate one domain of knowledge from another into departmental and disciplinary silos. Biology, chemistry, physics, literature, history, on and on. Researchers and scholars separated from each other and blind to what is happening in other buildings and other halls across the academic world. The 21st century must be an era of synthesis and integration. The challenges set before us are incredibly complex, unfolding as seamlessly interconnected patterns that span the globe. It is time to bring what we know together and build platforms for holistic knowledge whose complexity matches that of the real world. For my part, I want to combine two overarching themes, cognitive science and its application to global issues. Together, this provides a foundation for analyzing the human dimension of Earth systems. At universities across the globe, the study of atmosphere, ocean, and land is beginning to meld into a single framework. New schools are being formed that combine geology, geography, and atmospheric science together. I helped design one of the first undergraduate majors in this new field almost a decade ago, so it's something I'm quite familiar with. Combined with the study of living systems, vast ecosystems of plants, animals, and fungi, this overarching synthesis is known as Earth System Science. But something is missing. Humans. We are the largest driver of global change in the world today, and yet our studies of the Earth system do not adequately represent the human dimension, our biological makeup, our beliefs, our economic and political ideologies, the large-scale behaviors of what has proven to be the most disruptive and impactful species for natural systems on the planet. Humanity stands at a crossroad. Will we continue to deplete the world's resources, cripple the planet's living systems, and drive ourselves to extinction? Or will we build viable models for urban development, economic progress, and civic action that transition us to long-term sustainability and resilience? The absence of integrative methodologies for applying cognitive science to the study of Earth systems takes away our capacity to systematically analyze and design innovative solutions to the world's problems during a time of great consequence. We have to get the human response right in order to survive as a species. Time is of the essence, and I am just the person to take the lead. With formal training in Earth system science, complexity and pattern formation, and a broad theoretical exposure to cognitive science, social innovation, political and economic thinking, and critical analysis of historic patterns, I already have degrees in physics, philosophy, mathematics, and atmospheric science. My plan now is to partner with the International Center for Earth Simulation, whose mission is to dedicate one of the world's fastest supercomputers to the integration of knowledge about the Earth's many coupled systems. And I am seeking additional partnerships with research institutes dedicated to the study of cognition and culture, sustainable futures, and social innovation. This will facilitate knowledge integration across the cognitive sciences. It will allow us to create modeling frameworks for the study of human responses to global change. As an ongoing endeavor, it will stimulate the creation of new educational curricula, similar to the degree program in Earth Systems, Environment, and Society I designed for the University of Illinois several years ago. 
and it will promote the formation of a new research agenda with a cross-cutting research center on human interface design for global systems that brings together leading thinkers to collaborate with one another. This is what I am setting out to do. So why am I proposing this now? Because in the last 40 years, there's been an emerging picture from the cognitive sciences that, for the first time ever, tells us what real human nature is like. Grounded in a philosophy of embodiment, we are beginning to see how the mind really works as an ecologically intertwined web of connections between body, brain, and environment. Foundational knowledge is getting set in place through evolutionary studies of hominid history that tells us who we really are. On top of this, we are beginning to see how the mind operates. Research in neuroscience is telling us how the brain works, why emotions shape human reasoning in the ways they do, and how mental abilities develop across the lifespan. Research in linguistics is showing us where language comes from, how meaning arises, and why we are such a creative animal. And psychological research is revealing where our morality comes from and how it feeds and plays off the various cultures we live in. So we finally have a basis for connecting brain with culture, all the way through from synaptic firing to cultural narratives and institutional identities. Four years ago, I partnered with linguist and cognitive scientist George Lakoff to articulate a framework for analyzing the cognitive dimension of policy, and I launched a consulting firm to translate this framework into useful tools for practitioners in the policy development and advocacy arenas. Let's make this more concrete with an example. Social Security has proven to be a robustly popular program in every country that adopts it. Why is that? Because its user interface provides a positive experience that is intuitively appealing, easy to understand, and reinforced across the lifespan. We tend to see it as a community piggy bank, where people who work hard all their lives pay in, so they will be taken care of in their old age. They experience this by having money garnished from their checks, and they know what to expect from the system. Its popularity can be attributed to a set of cognitive design criteria, including understandability, inherent appeal, and positive reinforcement through life experience. This makes sense when we consider the mental models, cultural values, and structured life experiences that constitute how people think about Social Security. Efforts to design social policy that need to last for the long haul, like those for addressing climate change, natural disasters, and other systemic challenges, need to incorporate a policy response element that is informed by cognitive science if they are to be adopted successfully. Now is the time to formalize these foundations at the point of coupling between humanity and the Earth's many natural systems. As we seek to address global change in the 21st century, with unprecedented threats of climate disruption, resource scarcity, financial shocks, and more, we need rigorous methods for the study of the human dimension. And this is what I mean by viable models for human interface design. Getting humans right is essential. It is the great blind spot in all our efforts to design social policies for our economic, financial, and political institutions. By returning to the academy, I will forge partnerships with leading scholars, gain credibility as an advanced researcher, and help build next-generation academic programs for the students of tomorrow. Only a PhD will give me the long-term credibility, intellectual rigor, and formal training I'll need to complete this work. Yet the world can't wait any longer for this synthesis to get underway, so I want the PhD itself to pursue the solution. I will need allies to complete this phase of my quest. So what can you do to help? I've identified three things that will be needed to initiate this bold research agenda and make it a success. Number one, a forward-thinking research university that supports innovative scholarship. My top choices are Oxford's Martin 21st Century School, Columbia University's Earth Institute, and Stanford's Earth System Science Program. 
because they promote multidisciplinary approaches to addressing 21st century challenges, an excellent fit for what I proposed here. So if you know anyone at these institutions, please let me know and perhaps pass this video along and put in a good word for me. Number two, funding. Being a new field of study means it doesn't fit well within the standard categories for research grants. I need financial sponsorship to maintain the intellectual flexibility that this ambitious endeavor requires. So if you know of innovative foundations, client organizations, forward-thinking philanthropists, or anyone else who might step up and fund this, please let me know. And of course, number three, collaborators. Researchers, social entrepreneurs, and professional strategists who share this integrative vision and want to partner on projects moving forward. You can reach me here to talk more. I'd love to hear your thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. Thank you for taking the time to consider my proposal. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.